Hi, this is this is Thesia Ellis of This Grandma's Life podcast. It is December 10, 2022, and this is episode 10, and this one is called How's Your Bull Crap Matter? Okay, so I made the bull, I made it, you know, rated G or whatever, bull crap, but I'm probably going to use the other one throughout the, the this episode, and so I just want to prepare you for it. Um, apparently my computer this time was not letting me uh, lower and, and dim the screen. So we've got the evil grandma with the glare eyes again, but well, I guess we'll live through it. So I ran across this quote, but I'm thinking, because obviously I'm talking about having your bull crap meter and, and I think you'll understand what I'm talking about as we go throughout, throughout this episode. But the quote of the day is the undiscerning mind is like the root of a tree. It absorbs equally all that it touches, even the poison that would kill it. Master Po Kung Fu. I, I felt like we have been as a society given so much crap over the last couple of years. And so many of us have just taken it down and, and, and uh, dealt with it and believed it. But this quote helps you to understand, step back and think a little bit. The undiscerning mind is like the root of a tree. It absorbs equally all that it touches, even the poison that would kill it. Master Po, Kung Fu. So I just felt like that that particular quote was was helpful. You know what? <clears throat> I had no idea this was going to be an issue. I just rolled in from a basketball game. We we can my granddaughter uh, that we're raising. Many of you know is uh, had a tournament this week, so this is the third basketball game this week, and they won. And I always yell, so, but apparently because I yell, my voice is going to come and go a little bit. So we'll deal with that too. Farm happenings. You know what? Not much. It's December. There's not a lot going on, but we did get rain overnight. We got about an inch and a half of rain. I thought it was nice. Uh, it's It's been staying above freezing. That's even better. Uh, it's been averaging in the 40s and 50s in the days and the night. So I don't know. I can live with it. But yep, an inch and a half of rain overnight. And I always, I'm, I'm a nerd. I always record the weather and all that and, you know, just every everything like that. Every morning I get up early in the morning and record what the weather was the day before, what it's supposed to be for that particular day and all that other stuff. And I keep it in my farm books or just, just books that I can go back to and refer to if I want to. I have to admit, I don't usually go back and refer to them, but I record the rain. And uh, so I, uh, we are still behind. I was looking at the U.S. drought monitor and actually, and now maybe after this inch and a half, it won't be that bad, but mo for two or three or more months, we've actually been in the exceptional uh, drought, which is, I think, the, the most uh, severe of the drought in our particular area, in northeast Oklahoma, not all, not all of northeast Oklahoma, but in our particular area, we've been in a pretty significant drought. So the inch and a half of rain is definitely welcome. But other than that, my pigs are happy. My birds are happy. They're not laying any eggs, but they're happy. And uh, so, well, yeah, not much going on there. My three things today was play practice. That worked out pretty good. Um, I was asked to be a narrator for the kids play at our church. And, uh, it would kind of kind of ended up interesting because it seems like every, and we've got like 11 kids that are supposed to be in this play and some of them will show up one week and some of them won't show up the, you know the next week so we've had just a real kind of I don't know just kind of sparse uh, people coming you know bringing their kids to play practice or at church and stuff and so this morning when the pastor and the director of the play she works so hard showed up there's only just a, like two or three of us that had shown up and so you know this poor one was considering just canceling it for the year and not worrying about it but we decided no we think that we can i had been working all week on a, on rewriting the the script itself because uh, the way she had done it she had made copies of the book and was making notes on top of that and everything so i had actually typed it all out and rewritten it and then throughout the week i've been working on a powerpoint so that we can put it up on the screen that worked out really good actually what i did i put it on the powerpoint and then i turned it over to the pastor and he made it look like something because i don't i can i can get things onto a slide but you know doing things with the slide afterward was yeah 
So I left that to him. He did a wonderful job. And it's really cool because, you know, we're dealing with little kids, you know, most of them were pretty little, second and third grade. Some of them are a little bit older, like uh, Gabriel. He's in high school. He's 15. He's funny. But uh, uh, so because I have it on a PowerPoint that we can put up on the screen, if the kids forget their line, all they have to do is look up at the television. They can see what's going on. And then uh, Diana, the, the director, she she's real old school <laughs> and so she brought dvds to for the music to play the music well it doesn't work in the cd player so the pastor looked up you know how you can get on youtube and do karaoke and stuff for so the particular songs he went through this morning and actually found a very good versions of the songs that the kids can sing and and it goes up on the screen so if we forget the words we can just look up there all in all as discouraging as it was in, uh, early on today, it ended up being a very good, well, it was, and it was a dress rehearsal. That's I, that's how kind of serious it was. It was like, well, you know, we prayed about it and stuff and tried to, and, uh, and then just kind of plotted on. And you guys, I know I am a, I am a Christian. I do believe that Jesus died for my sins, but I'm one of those that I'm not, I'm not going around going, Oh, God did this. And God did that because I've seen too many people do that and they don't believe what they're saying. So whenever I say that God definitely had a hand in this, you're going to have to understand. I truly believe that we were discouraged, especially Diana. She was, she's put a lot of work into this and trying to get these kids involved and helping them. We got uh, costumes for them and encouraging them and helping them with, them with their lines. And then this morning it just looked pretty bleak, but then before uh, within an hour, Things were turned around and we're thinking, all right, we can pull this off in the morning. Even if half the kids don't show up, we've got it set up where we can pull it off. It's going to be great. And I'm grateful for that. Um, I had to leave and play practice a little bit early this morning because I was driving to Copan. This is the this was um, the girls won their first game which put them in the winner's bracket. And then they lost their second game, which I guess puts them in the I don't know if is that the loser's bracket. I don't know. But they. Uh, so they played again today and actually won and got third place in the tournament. It's, it was, you know, it was, it's a, a um, double bracket, you know, where you have a winner and losers bracket. So I was real proud of the girls. They got third, they won their game and it was, it wasn't an easy game. It should have been more easily than it was, but as it is with all high school sports and pro I'm probably even little kids sports, you get the refs that you pay for, I guess. And, and uh, one of the refs, was just flat too old to be out there and the other one he was young and 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 inexperienced and he made a lot of mistakes and then and so yeah there was a lot of a lot of injuries a lot of polyps a lot of bad calls but the girls won everyone survived with i mean we had some poked poked eyeballs and uh, definitely brumps and bruises, but it worked out pretty good. I'm pretty proud of these girls because we got a little bitty school. And, and even though we're surrounded by some little bitty schools, even those schools have a tendency to be even bigger than what ours is. So, and this was kind of rebuilding year. They got a new coach. And uh, so, yeah, I'm proud of them. You've seen a different, I've seen a difference in them just even from the beginning of the season. So that's good. So, the first of my three things is play practice. The second was a Copan tournament. And the third is this podcast. Now, what I've been kind of been doing is the last two times, this time and the previous time, I'm just recording them and uh, and then uploading them onto YouTube. I still haven't had to. Between the play and basketball and everything else I've got, I can't even look into seeing how to do a podcast where I can put it up on iTunes and Stitcher and all them. So I will get there maybe in January, maybe when things slow down a little bit. But I've got the podcast. I'm recording it now. I will not get it uploaded, but that's okay. Okay. My next segment is what I'm reading. Now, I'm still, I'm done reading this, but I still got segments in here that I wanted to read to you. And uh, I, and I say this every time. I love novels. Okay. I read good for me books too. I've got a couple of them over there. I'm, I'm waiting my way through, but novels have stories and keep your you know grab your attention and keep it and stuff and you learn things in it and and sometimes there's some observations like this particular one was an observation and we can all identify with this one with the way things are going now oh and this is from origin by dan brownie yes this is you know pretty much everything he put out puts out is controversial but i'm finding it fascinating too 
But on this first, this first one said Martin, and this was a woman. Uh, I can't remember what her first name was. Martin had always believed in the importance of responsible journalism as a cornerstone of freedom and democracy. And so she was routinely disappointed by journalists who incited controversy by broadcasting ideas that were patently absurd, all the while avoiding legal repercussions by simply turning every ludicrous statement into a leading question. And we all know that happens a lot. So I, that one caught my eye and uh, I marked it. And this one is another, it's a quote from Winston, Winston Churchill and it's, you have enemies? Good. That means you stood up for something. That rocks. I like that one. And this last one is something, it's a learning thing. I, I, you know, you learn stuff. You don't know that you learn it, what, that, what you're learning until you read it. And you go, oh, that's cool. And this one is the origin of the ampersand was always one of the uh, first things that Langdon taught his symbology classes. The symbol ampersand was a logogram literally a picture representing a word while many people assume the symbol uh, derived from the english word and it actually derived from the latin word et et the ampersand it's dark in here sorry the ampersand's unusual design was a typographical fusion of the letters e and t and the ligature still visible today in computer formats like the trebuchet whose ampersand ET, whatever, clearly echoed as its Latin origin. So ampersand does not necessarily mean and, you know, that's how we use it, but is actually a logogram and has Latin origins. So I thought that was interesting. I thought that was cool. And that's what I've been reading. What's on my mind? Oh, have, okay, we got, I told you about the children's Christmas program. That's been on my mind. Um, the Christmas parade, I believe we finally got some uh, uh, okays on the Christmas parade, the first annual foil Christmas parade. And we're going to be having all kinds of other stuff going too. But I think I think uh, the pastor said that we're getting pretty much okayed on the insurance to get on it. Uh, my husband has gotten on the board, which is cool to me because he doesn't get on board with much. But he is actually getting in, into deciding what to uh, <clears throat> Uh, put on the float and trying to get things together. So it's looking like this coming Saturday, we are going to be decorating a float and going down. And I found out, well, Tom took it and he said it's a one mile route for the parade and we are going to participate. Now I'm looking forward to that, honestly. I mean, I've got so much going on. It's kind of been stressful. I think once I get the children's play done tomorrow, I can start focusing on the parade. But right now I just can't. I just I can't do it too well. <laughs> And at the, on top of that, we've got the adult play that I hadn't even begun to uh, to memorize my lines. We're still working out blocking and stuff. And what's going to kind of work out on that one, because I think we were going to do that next week. Well, we have a small church and a lot of people in our church are kin to each other. Like there's one there's uh, one woman. Uh, I bet a full quarter of the people attend that church or some uh, relationship to hers. And and these people. This particular family, they have two or three members of different of the family in different households, and they usually sponsor uh, foreign exchange students. And actually, it works out really cool. It always amazes me in this little bitty podunk town that we have foreign exchange students. That kind of, I think we've got some. We always get them from Spain. We always get them from Germany and uh, a couple others. But I think I think there's ones from the Netherlands this year. There's a couple of them from, uh, you know, other parts of Europe and stuff. Um, so we have five, six or seven students in our little bitty school that are uh, foreign exchange students. And, oh, I forgot where I was going with this one. But it, it's cool that they come here. Oh, that's what it is. So the families that are sponsoring them, they want to show them things in the United States. Well, we live near Missouri. And I think a whole bunch of the families are going to Branson for the next weekend. What well, else? The weekend we're supposed to have our play. That's a, that's also the weekend that we're ha that the parade is happening and stuff. So that's part of the reason we were a little bit concerned about doing a float for the parade because half the kids that are in in our church are going to be in Branson. So I don't know. Well, it'll work out, I'm sure. But 
uh, I think we've decided because the adult play was not specifically Christmas. It's not, spe it's, it is uh, Jesus related and stuff and, it, and it, it's going to be a good play, but I think it's going to be better to be done in January. That's going to give us more time to uh, learn our lines, get everything else out of the way, get Christmas out of the way, get the kids program out of the way, get the parade out of the way. And you know, everything else. I mean, still like I've got two or three more basketball games to go between here and Christmas and stuff too. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. And so I think that we're going to hold off on the Christmas play for a couple of weeks and that'll be nice. I think, and it'll be, I think it'll be good when we get that done. So those are the things that are on my mind and uh, yep, got a lot going on. So my main subject now, I, this is a, this is kind of a new part of my podcast because I usually make that as just what's on my mind, but I think I need to be a little more specific about what my main subject is and why, what is my main subject. Um, as we have gone through the last two years, you know how it is when you learn something, you can't really unlearn it. And I, you know what, if you disagree with me, I, I don't care. Okay. Um, I struggled mightily with the mask when we had to put on a mask. I, uh, for personal reasons, um, but I, struggle with that but you know in the very beginning you know we're we're we were trying to stay away from each other we were trying to do a good job and be good people and and uh do th this wasn't even the social distancing this was the early stages of stay home don't go anywhere only walmart's open only this is open and you can't even go to church and then when the church is open we had to go through specific things and stuff of course we had to wear a mask i hated wearing masks but my bullshit meter immediately went up as soon as I heard that people were wearing shields because we could spread the virus with our eyes, I'm thinking, what? And even when they tried to, even when they explained to me the logic behind it, my, I knew, I knew that this was bullshit. And so many other things that we have been fed over the last two or three years, you know, don't get me started on the, the vaccine, the mRNA, uh, gene therapy that had its name changed to a vaccine and that because it's uh, because it uh is under emergency basis that that whoever has a bad result from that can't don't have any repercussions with the pharmaceutical companies come on did they did your bullshit meter not come up on that one really so you want to force me to have a shot but if i get sick there's nothing i can do i can't say do anything about it well yeah so, yeah, so I'm learning as I go through life to develop my bullshit meter. And I'm also learning. I'm trying to teach it to my granddaughter. I'm not trying to make her a rebel. I'm not trying to make her an outcast or an outsider or anything like that. But I do want her to learn to think on her own. Don't just take in what's fed to you whether it's school, whether it's news, whether, whether it's radio, music, whatever it is, have a discerning mind, just like what's in the quote, quote, discern what needs to go into your head. Now I have to admit, this is something I had to learn the hard way because you, if you let everything in there, you know, uh, the old, old saying garbage in garbage out, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but honestly, if you think about it, if you are having bad thoughts, if you are have, struggling with depression, if you're struggling with anger, or frustration or something like that what are you thinking of and what caused you to think about that what 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 are the what is behind it that makes you think of that so if you are taking in poison you're putting out poison if you're taking in bullshit and believing it you're living the bullshit that they give you then and, and believing it and so i'm trying to teach kinsey how to have a bullshit meter, how to discern how she should live her life and not just to say, well, I was told to do this and move on. But we have been taught. I mean, think about it, especially us older folks. What is it that you, when you say, well, wh why to your parents? Because I said so. We were raised because I said so. And now we're being told, well, always, we've all been told because I said so. And I don't want, I want you guys to think, wait a minute, that's not good enough. I want you to think about what you're being told, think about what you're uh, told to do and see if it fits in with your own beliefs and uh, ways that you want to live. And if it's not, 
don't just don't be a rebel and go, no, hell no, I'm not doing that. I, but I do want you to say, OK, how can I how can I live within my own boundaries with and also with whatever they're doing? And, and you know, I you guys know I do a lot of uh, uh, part of a lot of prepper communities and stuff. And I, I have to admit, I get aggravated with people says, I live the way I live and if you feel like it. Deal with it. Well, great you know what you're going to be an awful lonesome person you're going to be, your life is going to be harder on you because you c completely refuse to to cooperate in any way shape or form so there's a, there is a balance just like everything else use your bullshit meter but use your head and figure out how to to make it work for everybody and don't be obnoxious okay so um are what is your bullshit meter are you exercising your bullshit meter are you using it and if you are are you teaching your children are you teaching your grandchildren are you helping them to learn to think for themselves and not to take in everything that's given you know turned uh, spoken to them and all you know how or through social media whatever else teach your kids let's let's teach ourselves to think again let's teach the next generation to think okay my story of the day. Oh my gosh, guys. I don't know why I didn't think of this one last week. It was so funny. Um, I did a bell ringing with a woman last week and uh, we, we had a really good time. So you're standing there ringing the bell. You're looking at people. I'm a people watcher and I have to be careful because I get the snickering and stuff. And so I taught her. I said, okay, have you heard the term watch your six? She goes, yeah, yeah. Like somebody's, my, uh, somebody's behind you. And I said, well, do you understand what that means? And so I explained to her that what your six or six means six o'clock on the clock and somebody right behind you. I said, so if I tell you something, I said, look at your two or watch your two, think of two o'clock on the, on the meter, on, on the clock and look in that direction. So we can sh say, Hey, look what I'm seeing over there without actually having to point him. And that I did, I showed her at two o'clock <laughs> and then at 11 o'clock, I'm going, Oh my gosh, 11, 11, 11. <laughs> There's this elderly couple. <laughs> old. I bet they were 80. They were so old that they had to help each other walk, which is fine. But he had a huge leather belt on with a huge Colt 45 strapped to the outside of his clothes. <laughs> it, was, it was, and he was so little, he was so old and shrunk. And the gun was so big, it literally hung down to his knees and he's just walking and his wife is holding his, holding his arm and they're walking together and help each other walk. So they pass and the lady I was ringing the bell with, she was what was funny. So I was just going to be happy with watching this old couple with this huge gun. At first, I mean, because it was like an old West type belt, you're going, is this real? Is that a real belt? Is that a real gun? And then you realize, yeah, it really is. And so... <laughs> My friend that was ringing the bell with me, she goes, oh, my gosh, i got to get a picture of this. So I'm out front giggling away and ringing my bell. Thank you for the donations and stuff like that. And she's chasing this man with her phone to take a picture of him. She was following him around the store trying to get a good picture. So when she came back, she finally she goes, I just had to go up to him and say, can I take your picture? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you can take my picture. And he started telling her, he goes, yeah, one time I nearly lost my teeth in a fight. So I decided if I'm going to, I'm just, since I carry, I better just open carry and I'll just put my gun on the outside of my clothes and nobody messes with me anymore. And it was so funny, and, you know, and I'll be perfect honest. Okay. It was a huge gun. It was very formidable, but he was so old. If he wants to really get into an altercation with somebody, which is doubtful, who's going to pick on an 80 something year old man, it might take him a minute and a half. To get it out of the holster but that's just the way i see it but my friend she got pictures she sent me a picture of it, a copy of the picture and we was showing but I, i'm serious it was funny watching her trying to chase this man around the store trying to get a picture of him covertly but she got a picture and she got her story it was great <laughs> all right my income producing activity of the day is the fold card this is a prepaid a debit card that as you use it as and uh, you earned Satoshi's, which are little mini bites of Bitcoin. 
And so, yeah, we've all heard that Bitcoin has been kind of been taking a, a dump lately, but that's okay. You know, where, what else? It, it, it still can be over time as you make up your Satoshis, you can still cash in over time for, you know, fiat cash, if that's what you want. I don't care. But you, as you use it, you can use it on Amazon. You can use it at the grocery store. You can use it at different places. Like I said, it's a prepaid debit card. You fund it yourself. You just put some money on it. I've been using mine just pretty much for everything. And uh, then you get this little thing that says, do you want to do the 1% cash or 1% Satoshis? Or do you want to spend to see if you can do more? Well, they give you certain number of spins, spins a day. So it's kind of fun. You can get, I think the other day, the best one I've had so far is I won 10,000 Satoshis. So that was pretty cool. But yeah, income producing activity. The, the uh, link is in the show notes and check it out. It really, I, it is a way to get Bitcoin without actually having to buy it. And it's just, you're just using your debit card, just like you use for anything else. And um, you're going to spend it anyway. Might as well do it that way. So that's pretty much all I've got for today. Like I said, I came running in from a basketball game. My throat's just a little bit tired. But where I can be found, ooh, I've got a this Ellis Family Farms YouTube channel. Guess what? I'm finally Grandma's Homestead. I changed it just the other day. So find me at Grandma's Homestead YouTube channel. I've also got Farm Animal Life YouTube channel. That's just where I stick a camera in to a pen or someplace with one of my animals. I just stuck my camera in with my breast chicks the other day. And uh, so, and so there's no talking. There's no storyline. Just, you know birds doing their thing instagram i am thesia ellis tiktok i'm at thesia ellis facebook i'm thesia v dayhoff ellis me we is thesia ellis twitter is at thesia e and all those fun things and so and those will all be down in the show notes and stuff too so guys i hope that you're doing well getting ready for christmas or do whatever it is is your hanukkah i don't care enjoy your life do what you got to do have fun don't let anybody bully you out of your own beliefs and stuff. Just be you. Do you live. Live until you die, guys. This is it. This is all we've got. God bless. See you next time.